In our last interaction, we talked about the world of energy. How this energy can be used to heal various of our ailments is something that we are going to concentrate on this particular video. The first thing to be understood is how does the traditional medicine work? We take a drug, whether it is uh, a pharmaceutical agent or it is a hormone, and then that drug conveys a certain information to our body. Largely, this phenomena of taking a drug and conveying information to the body is chemical in nature. It conveys such kind of an information to the body that the body itself changes its own functions and, and tries to bring back normality or what is known in the medical field as homeostasis. Now, can there be some other things like sounds, like resonance, like vibration, which can convey the same information to the body. Scientists did a lot of experiments. Long time ago, scientists did experiments on rats. What they did was, they took a family of rats, they put some electrodes on the mother rat, and the mother rat was kept on the seashore. And then her small children were taken down in the sea to deeper, deeper and deeper levels, to such a deeper level where even light could not penetrate. And then one by one, those children, rat children, were killed. The moment a particular child of that rat mother was killed, her brain back up on the seashore registered some activity. Now, at a point where even light fails to communicate, there existed a communication mechanism between the mother rat and the children of the mother rat. Now, we just can't see that communication does not mean that the communication doesn't exist. Take, for example, this tuning fork. Nowadays, we have tuners Few decades back, musicians used to carry these tunic folks because they would give a particular frequency and then they will get to know about, uh, about uh, matching this frequency with the instrument which they carry to tune their instruments. So, when we strike this tuning folk, listen to the sound. So when I strike this folk, not only does this vibrate and cause a sound, but if there are other tuning folks lying here, and if they have the same tune of this, which this particular uh, tuning folk carries, for example, this is the tuning folk for note A uh, at 440 hertz. So those tuning folks, which also are tuned to 440 hertz A note, they also start to vibrate. I have not even touched them, but they also start to vibrate. This is something known as resonance. It's like people who belong to one particular religion. When something uh, derogatory is said about that religion, they suddenly unite and then fight together. It is kind of that kind of a phenomenon. Back in um, 1895, there was a person by the name of D.D. D. Palmer. He came out with a new technique of healing uh, known as chiropractic. And even today, chiropractic is very famous. Even at the place where I live, we have a lot of centers and they are doing wonderfully well for ailments such as uh, a problem with the L4 or L5 in the backbone, having a stiff neck. They give the vibration to the body and the body suddenly cures itself. So Palmer largely introduced the phenomena of vibration in the world of healing. And 
Then another revolution happened in 1970 when an Oxford biophysicist by the name of Maclare, C.W.F. Maclare, came out with a research where she tried to figure out the efficiency of the traditional drugs, the chemistry-based drugs, and vibrational medicine or energy medicine. She tried to calculate which one is more efficient. Now she explains that when you take a drug in order to go inside the body and cause a chemical reaction, it has to bind to something. Now, what it turn does is it creates a heat. If you have done any of um, your chemistry practicals in the school, you would understand that when you do a re chemical reaction, a lot of heat is produced. Now, this heat which is produced in physics, we call it dissipated energy or wasted energy. Now, if the source, that is the drug which we are trying to take, has say 100% of energy, then 98 to 99% of energy is lost in that reaction where the heat is generated and it's only 1% or at max 2% which reaches the body. On the other hand, when we talk about energy medicine, when we talk about a vibrational signature being passed on to the body, maybe it is sound, maybe it is electromagnetic field, maybe it is light. Nearly 100% of information is passed. The loss of energy in the process of being transferred to the body is almost negligible. So she concluded that vibrational medicine is probably 100 times more efficient than the traditional chemistry-based medicine. She also uh, tried to analyze how fast is the effect of traditional medicine versus the vibrational medicine or the energy medicine. Now, she explains again that the traditional medicine has to pass through body fluid. Now, in order to pass through the fluid, anything would take about one second of time to pass through a distance of about a foot. Now, a foot is equal to 12 inches. That is broadly the scale which you have at your homes or your children's have. One, one scale of about a foot, 12 inches. So, one second is taken by a drug to move this much distance in the body. However, when we talk about the energy medicine or the vibrational medicine, it transfers at the speed of light. You are giving a photo medicine, it will transfer at 1,86,000 miles per second. It is profoundly, unimaginably profoundly faster. If we had an option to ask the biological system which kind of medicine it would prefer, I am sure that it would choose the vibrational or the energy medicine any day. Now, having understood the difference between the traditional medicine and the energy medicine, we now need to understand what happens when a person becomes diseased? Have you ever seen an EEG? So the graph would uh, give you a pattern, something like this, a wavy pattern, a vibrational pattern. So the waves can be harmonious waves or they can be choppy uh, stress waves. I'll just show you on this whiteboard. All right, give me a sec. So if a person is healthy, the waves would form in a particular rhythm. For example, this is a healthy wave. Now, this, is, this distance is almost equal. They are rhythmic. However, 
Now, this is chaos. It is showing chaotic vibrational pattern. Now, if there is harmony in the waves, so this is equal to this and this is equal to this and this is equal to this and it is not angular like um, the teeth of an axe, right? Then we say uh, that health prevails. However, if we have chaotic patterns, then it symbolizes disease, right? Same as the principle in graphology. When I read handwriting of people, how do you get to know if somebody is angry? I'll give you a small little clue. Now, if you see somebody's handwriting, how can you say that this is the handwriting of an angry person? He has emotional problems of anger, anger outbursts, etc. So, if you can say that the writing goes something like this, A lot of angles, a lot of it, it, it is going something like this, right? Then this handwriting would show to you, reveal to you a person who has a lot of anger. However, if you see something, uh, handwriting something like this, for example, roundish. He is a calm person. And if somebody is having an anger issue, what do we do in graphology is that we give him exercises. In graphotherapy, we tell him, okay, what you have to do is write the figure of 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. And believe me, for you it might be easy, but for him it is very irritating and very difficult. But if he can do that, then miracle happens. In about 30 to 40 days of time, his anger begins to subside. This is how graphotherapy works. Okay. So, there are bad vibrations and there are good vibrations. Vibrations which are rhythmic, which are not erratic, they are good vibrations and they represent harmony, they represent health. And chaotic, choppy vibrations represent disease. So now, the point is, is there any way that if the vibrations are choppy, we can make those vibrations harmonized? And if we can do that, then we can heal people with the help of energy medicine. Now, for this purpose, we have to understand our concept of entrainment. Now, entrainment is basically the tendency of two oscillating bodies to lock into phase so that they vibrate in harmony. Back in 1665, there was a, a Dutch physicist and scientist by the name of Christian Huygens. He found out accidentally though that when he hung two clocks with pendulums on a wall close to each other, then after a time, that is eventually, both of the pendulums started to move in synchronization of with each other. So this is no synchronization, but this is now synchronized movement. So they end up swinging in synchronization at the exact same rate. Eugen then recognized that this is not only applicable to pendulums, but it is a basic law of physics. So systems, they entrain to each other. That is, they have a tendency to catch the good vibrations and to be like the good vibrations, to change themselves. So there is a tendency to drive both, if there are two systems, to both systems, to harmony with each other. Which goes to show that even non-living things are vulnerable to vibrations. And just because of this vulnerability, we say that company affects and parents tell their children to be selective about the, about the friends they make. Because you are vulnerable. 
and that is why we say reading is very dangerous. You are vulnerable and you might get into a false trap of a sick wicked mind who has written something which he himself might not believe in. And that is why now in the psychological world, unless and until they are fairly um, sure about the background of a person, they would not entertain his or her theories, the theories which he or she has propounded uh, into the world of psychology. Any system opens to what it seeks and that is harmony. There have been various practices to make the distorted vibrations turn into harmonious vibrations. For example, Mantra Vigyan. Uh, for those who know the, the qualitative aspect of what we speak, for example, the sound of um, Sham. Now, what is the qualitative aspect of this sound? If you know that, then you can have a combination of sounds because sound is nothing but a vibration to heal the person. Then we have Reiki healing and we will be discussing this in detail. Then we have Pranic healers, we have Crystal healers, we have Quantum healing, we have Qigong. Back in Tibet, uh, there was a practice of uh, sound healing. They had bowls like these, right? Tibetan bowls and the Nepalese bowls and they will sound the bowl they will make the person listen to these pure, incredible, soothing, harmonious sounds and make them rid of their ailments. Sometimes they also make you wear these kind like helmets and then they dun dun. So, largely the principle behind is to harmonize the distorted vibrations. And this was caught long ago by Pythagoras and modern science has somehow roots in the Greek philosophy. And Pythagoras was known to have healed many of his patients just with the help of sounds. But what incredible thing he did was he used not only one sound which was used in Nepal, which was used in Tibet and in, in India also, you know, we had just a melody. Ah, melody. But he came up with chords. He said that if we want to give power to a particular vibration, then use that vibration and also along with that vibration, bring on the friends of that particular vibration. So for example, for those of you who have a little knowledge about music, then know that we play a C chord when we give a C vibration, then we also give the E and the G note vibration because the C, the E and the G are, harmoni are harmonious with each other. They complement each other. They help each other. It is just like in a world war, there were allies. The friends versus different set of friends. One set of friends fighting the other set of friends. So, so this was kind of a revolution in the world of healing. Now, if sound can be used to heal people, then cannot thought be used for the same thing? Is sound the only energy? Is thought not energy? Energy includes thought as well. And therefore, intention plays a major, major role in Reiki healing. When a practitioner, a Reiki practitioner, comes in touch with a client, he touches the client at the various locations of ailment. He tries to tune in. Of course, when is it tuned? He tries to tune in with the forces which are there in the universe and with the power of intention which he or she has. She tries to tell those forces to direct their vibrations into the diseased part and this is how healing takes place. 
So now you have a fair amount of idea of what healing is as opposed to what a drug does, what a physician does. Now you know what healing is. Now you know that healing can take place through energy. You also know how actually does healing take place through energy. So now, after uh, a few days, uh, we'll be able to enter to the world of Reiki healing because this was the base which was necessary to know before the gates of Reiki can be thrown open in front of you. But before I go, I want to narrate to you a small short poem by William Butler Yeats, which he wrote back in 1899. And he said, Had I heaven's embroidered cloths and wrought with gold and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half light, I would spread the cloth under your feet. But I, being poor, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. So, my dear friends, whatever I have, whatever wisdom I carry from my experience of Reiki, I will be pouring in front of you in the days to come. My only humble request is, to try to understand the concepts and to try to practically apply them in your daily life. And slow but steady, we will become very, very wonderful Reiki healers. Thank you for being with me.